Hello, welcome to MRU e-learning powered by Mallareddy University. I, Dr. B. Kirtiga, Assistant Professor at School of Agricultural Sciences, Mallareddy University. Today, I will be presenting on remote sensing in agriculture. So, remote sensing in agriculture is being presented as it has become a cornerstone of modern agriculture, bridging technology and food security for forever growing population. So, this graph displays the world population has grown from around 2.5 billion in 1952, nearly 8 billion in 2024. This sharp rise has created enormous pressure on global food systems. Let's see the challenges in food production. Cereal production to be increased from 2.1 billion tonnes to 3 billion tonnes by 2050 and meat production to be increased from 200 million tonnes to 470 million tonnes. There would be huge demand in future for the commodities like edible, veg edible vegetable oil, milk, sugar, eggs, fish, meat, fruits and vegetables. And one major challenge in crop production is insect pest which is drastic, drastically reduce both yield and quality of the crop. So crop damage due to insect ranges from 35 to 42%. And equally serious concern is weeds as they compete with the crops for nutrients, water, sun, sunlight, leading to 20 to 32% yield losses. So another pressing issue is fungal disease outbreaks. And further constraint arises from abiotic stresses like sun scale, heat extremes, which weaken the plant tissues. So plants are constantly exposed to stress factors like abiotic and biotic stress. Abiotic is non-living factor and biotic is living factor. Abiotic stresses includes insufficient or excessive water supply, salinity, extreme temperatures, heavy metals, ultraviolet radiations. On the other hand, biotic stresses includes viruses, diseases, weeds, insects and nematodes. So, remote sensing ensures early detection of crop arising from moisture deficiencies, insects, fungal and weed infestations can help overcome this potential food shortage. So, effective crop assessment is indispensable and it also plays a pivotal role in improving the crop productivity and ensuring the food security. Next, yield estimation, which predicts the production accurately. Soil analysis evaluates soil properties and soil fertility. Soil mapping. Soil mapping creates spatial distribution maps of different soil types. Land cover mapping. So, which monitors both agriculture and non-agriculture land use. Let's look at the challenges in traditional crop assessment methods and how remote sensing provides the solutions. So traditional methods are labor intensive, slow and costly. Coverage is also limited and often depends on weather condition. Sometimes there are access issues, lack of adequate historical data, even environmental impact. In contrast, remote sensing technology enables large scale monitoring, cost effectiveness, non-invasive, invasive, invasive, early detection of crop issues, timely and frequent updates, integration with other technologies, weather resilience and environmental sustainability. So, remote sensing not only overcomes the most limitations of those traditional methods, but also makes crop assessment smarter, faster and more sustainable. So, this image shows the basic process of remote sensing in agriculture. So, here the sun acts as the energy source sending the radiation to the crop field which is the target. So, the reflected energy is captured by the sensor on a satellite and the data is then transmitted to a processing station. So, where it is converted into usable information. So, finally, this information is used for analysis and application through some advanced softwares like GIS, uh, etc., where it transforms raw data into smart forming decisions. So, in short form, I could say from sun to solution. So, remote sensing is classified into different types. So, based on source of energy used, electromagnetic spectrum observed and kind of information we want to extract from the crops. So, based on source of energy we have 
ஆக்டிவ் அண்ட் பேசிவ் ரிமோட் சென்சிங் ஸோ ஆக்டிவ் ரிமோட் சென்சிங் யூசஸ் ரேடார் விச் மீன்ஸ் வித் ஏர் வி யூஸ் த மைக்ரோவேவ் இன் த மைக்ரோவேவ் ஸ்பெக்ட்ரம் வேர் ஆஸ் பேசிவ் ரிமோட் சென்சிங் ரிலைஸ் ஆன் த சன்லைட் ஆர் எமிட்டட் ரேடியேஷன் so active remote sensing penetrates into the clouds that's how it's suitable for all weather conditions whereas in passive remote sensing it's not possible so active remote sensing includes sar that is synthetic aperture radar for high resolution imaging whereas passive remote sensing includes satellite ground net based and uav uav based remote sensing so uav is nothing but unmanned aerial vehicle so commonly we call as drone so uavs offer high spatial spectral and temporal resolution at a lower cost so based on electromagnetic spectrum observed spectral and hyperspectral remote sensing spectral remote sensing measures the reflection of light from a target across specific wavelength so it uses sensors to capture the information multiple discrete bands of the electromagnetic spectrum so spectral rs can be distinguished between plant species or stress factors with high accuracy whereas hyperspectral re- uh, remote sensing uses narrow and contiguous spectral bands which provides detailed biochemical and physiological crop data for example spectral rs are landsat and sentinel two satellites were avaris and hyperion for hyperspectral remote sensing examples so in short spectral band uses few bands whereas hyperspectral remote sensing uses 100 narrow bands which gives detailed information so radar remote sensing uses microwave radiation as we saw in the previous slide and measures backscatter sk- signals whereas thermal remote sensing measures temperature to assess the crop stress and water availability so radar remote sensing estimates the crop height biomass and canopy structure also mapping the crop areas identifying the types and monitoring growth whereas thermal remote sensing estimates crop water stress and transpiration rates also determining irrigation requirements so in short radar shows the crop structure on the other hand thermal remote sensing shows the crop stress and also water needs so satellites and sensors used in the agriculture firstly landsat it provides multispectral imagery for land use agriculture and environmental monitoring so sentinel 2 offers high resolution imagery for vegetation monitoring so precision agriculture and also natural resource management so modis modis provides global coverage for monitoring crop health broad conditions and also agricultural productivity so if we say in short landsat for land use sentinel is for precision high resolution and modis is for global view so most widely used vegetation indices for crop monitoring in agriculture or ndvi that is normalized difference vegetation index and evi is which is enhanced vegetation index so ndva is simple and effective for general crop health and evi is more advanced and also sensitive index particularly works well in dense vegetation which gives very clearer information so what is the soil moisture mapping so let's just visualize how water is distributed in the soil using remote sensing there are two important key steps under the soil moisture mapping firstly microwave sensor so it is a tool actually which measures the soil moisture secondly satellite data analysis it's the process where data is converted into maps so without data we could not able to create the map and vice versa so there are three stages under the crop yield estimation firstly early season monitoring where remote sensing data can provide early insights into the crop development and potential yield in mid season assessment monitoring crop health and stress indicators allows for adjusting to farming practices for optimal yield and finally harvest prediction where predicting the yield at harvest time which helps the farmers to prepare for shortage marketing and also 
logistics needs so in short we can say early season monitoring tracks the initial crop growth season so mid season assessment tracks the crop health and stress and harvest prediction forecast final yield and to plan the logistics so precision farming applications firstly vrt variable rate technology so using the remote sensing we adjust the fertilizers pesticides and irrigation application for specific field conditions secondly targeted scouting so using the sensors or drones we identify the areas with potential problem such as pest or disease infestations for effective and um, efficient management then yield mapping recording the harvest data to analyze the variations in yield across the field uh, helping the farmers identify areas with higher or lower productivity so challenges in remote sensing data availability so first is data availability getting timely and reliable data from satellites uav or sensors second is data processing so handling and analyzing huge volume of data efficiently so data integration combining remote sensing data with other form of data for better decision making so in short we can say get the data process the data and combine the data so successful remote sensing implementation this slide shows real benefit of remote sensing why it's valuable for the farmers first is increased yield precision practices guided by remote sensing boost crop productivity so reduced input cost here optimized input uses saves the fertilizer and pesticide expenses third better water management improved irrigation scheduling speaking of which irrigation scheduling means when to apply the water how much to apply the water which conserves the water and enhances the yield so to conclude remote sensing is transforming agriculture by improving the efficiency and productivity so with advanced technologies its future applications will further drive sustainable farming from pixels to productivity remote sensing real solutions thank you